Chinese military had probed weaponizing coronavirus in 2015, claims a leaked document quoted in the Australian and British media. The Australian newspaper said bombshell documents obtained by US State Department showed PLS scientists and officers making a sinister prediction about World War III being fought with biological weapons that could cause the enemy's medical system to collapse. Australian analysts argue this is as close to smoking gun evidence as can be. The Chinese media, however, has called it a smear campaign. As the world continues to battle the seemingly endless coronavirus pandemic, here comes a bone-chilling revelation. The Chinese military considered weaponizing the new coronavirus years before the pandemic struck the world. That's the finding in a study by the US State Department. On the record and very damning. Chinese military scientists have said for years that the Third World War would be fought with biological weapons. The PLA paper fantasizes that such a bioweapon attack could topple an enemy country's public health system. The bombshell document also suggests that SARS, which hit China in 2003, could have been a man-made weapon unleashed by terrorists. The recent reports uh, of uh, the Chinese capability to have a biological warfare unleashed on the world is uh, not surprising. Biological weapon uh, has been very effectively used to maim the economies and cripple economies of the world as a targeted. Experts argue that the secret documents are a reason why Beijing has been reluctant to allow a transparent probe into the outbreak of COVID-19 in Wuhan in 2019. China, which is over ambitious, they want to become a superpower. They want to become a superpower in the whole country. Reports have so far blamed the Chinese wet market in Wuhan as a source of the virus. Was COVID-19 a result of an accidental release of the virus kept for military use? Bureau Report, India Today. So smoking gun evidence as the Australian think tank seems to in believe or is it too far-fetched and a smear campaign as the Chinese media insists? Joining me on India First... Dr. Li Meng Yan, a virologist who had to escape China after giving out some harsh truths about the coronavirus. She now joins me from New York. Also with me is Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, former top diplomat. Jaydev Ranade, former additional secretary of the research and analysis wing, keeps a hawk eye on China. Dr. Harsh Mahajan, founder of Mahajan Imaging. And of course, General Gurmeet Singh, former Kashmir Corps Commander and former Additional Director General of Military Operations. But I want to go cut across to Dr. Li Meng Yan first. Dr. Yan, what do you make of this report? Is this smoking gun evidence? Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, this document is one of the smoking guns that can prove China government has a long-term program of non-traditional bioweapons which I define it as unrestricted bioweapon in my second report published last October, and to use it to conquer the whole world. So in that document you mentioned, also I mentioned in my report published on March, that they talk about how to develop such non-traditional bioweapon, which should be, I mean, the very important thing is, looks like come from nature. And also, to okay. reach this objective, they have to use deny and also misinformation to mislead the world when people realize it's come from the lab. Okay. And Dr. They, Yan, yeah. you, have argued, you have argued that the virus did not emerge from the wet market at Wuhan. You've argued it came from a Chinese military lab. Is there evidence to back this claim, doctor? Yes, I start to tell people via YouTube anonymously from last January via Uta media in Chinese to tell the world that this virus is come from the PLA lab, 
which they use their unique and they discover the backbone, bad coronavirus after a lot of enhancement and finally get this human target uh, virus. And this is unintentionally released. All the things I mentioned in that broadcast all get verified and also China government knows it. That's why they immediately had a response after that waiting hours. Yes, and you've said it's intentionally been released. It wasn't an accidental release. Dr. Yan, is this then a bioweapon unleashed, as the report argues, to cause the enemy's medical system to collapse? Yes, the medical system collapse is also one of the things they want to reach by using this unrestricted bioweapon. So basically, in that textbook, that is PLA golden standard for the golden guidance uh, written by the bioweapon general De Zhongxu and also senior officer Feng Li in the general uh, logistic department of PLA five years ago or six years ago. They did, uh, clearly write that this bioweapon, they should not be high mortality because that's easy for people to realize it's a bioweapon. So this has to give also maybe mortality low, but they can give a secondary damage to destroy the enemy's medical system and also the social society. So that's why you say even when they out of control during their community trial in Wuhan last year, so Wuhan and China also get into such mess up situation. Yes, that's the things you all can find the answer from that textbook. Okay, and the Chinese media, Dr. Yan, the Chinese media says this report has no facts. The report that appeared in the Australian that seems to quote U.S. State Department officials and documents, uh, it's too far-fetched. So uh, what I want to tell you is that uh, response from the China government is also included in the textbook, which is their misinformation campaign. That's what I defend in my third report as unrestricted scientific misinformation. So China government clearly write in the book that the golden standard to identify whether the virus come from nature or not is to say whether this virus match the natural evolution history. No, we didn't see such evidence at all even after one year, right? And on the other hand, I have provided enough solid scientific evidence together with intelligence evidence, which China government cannot deny, but they only can recruit their misinformation campaign, including say, uh, NIH and the WHO and also Lancet, Nature and Scientists to dismiss it. So if okay. you want to listen to China government, you will waste your time. Okay, but Dr. Yan, the Chinese scientists and PLA commanders, they may have talked about genetically engineering a virus in 2015 in this report. Can that 2015 report directly be linked to the spread of coronavirus in 2021 and 2020? I mean, from what you gathered on ground from that report, join the dots for us, Dr. Yan. So actually, I just want to tell you that this is open published textbook published by Military Medical Press and it's a textbook for military students in the universities. So you should know that this is also, I quote as Global Times, is that it's a book about yes. a series. And also in this book, they clearly mention in the preface that, preface that they get fully support from PLA and the Chinese government in writing this. And I want to emphasize it, this is not the beginning of their study of contemporary bioweapons. This is just one step, which we have evidence now back to six years ago. But after that, they have also modified a lot and they have recruited a lot of labs under the cover of civil labs, under the cover of international labs and working with the military to develop it. So they have better knowledge and experience uh, after the six years, that's what later you say COVID-19 happened. Stay with me, Dr. Yan. Let me now throw this open uh, to guests who watch China very, very closely. And Jaydev Ranade, you watch China like a hawk. Your take on this report, sir. Well, I think it's a very damaging report. It's one more uh, nail in the Chinese coffin, I would say. Uh, there are a couple of interesting factors that come out from this report. 
One is that the editor-in-chief of this paper, Shu Te Chong, was one of the lead scientists researching the SARS um, outbreak. And uh, he is known to the Chinese leadership, to the top leadership. He's briefed them very often uh, during this time. Secondly, the 10 of the 18 people who were involved in this report are from the Air Force Medical University. Yes. Uh, yes. Now called the Fourth Medical College, which was brought under the direct control of the Central Military Commission in 2017 by Xi Jinping. So the military link of this is very clear. Third, there was a paper written as far back as 2010, which is five years before this, by Kuo Chi Wei, a professor of the Third Military Medical University, called War for Biological Dominance. So this um, uh, undercurrent of biological warfare has been there for quite some time. Let me also point to two other things. Okay. One, that ethnic research or genetic research on um, ethnic minorities has been going on for a long time, primarily for domestic security purposes, okay. but also for other purposes. They're I'll also come to that aspect in just a moment, if you permit, Jaydev Ranade. I want to bring in Ambassador Vishnu Prakash. Uh, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, uh, you know, Jaydev Ranade talks of a, a SARS study that China conducted in 2002-03, at that time blaming foreign terrorists uh, for, for SARS. But subsequently, they worked extensively on it, and then this report has emerged. In your appreciation, Ambassador, smoking gun or too far-fetched? Well, it could be either, could be neither, or could be both, you know, and I'm saying that with all sense of responsibility because this is a very complicated matter. Uh, fact is that nothing is off limits for rogue actors, and uh, the bioweapons is a poor man's atom bomb. So there has been an effort by the rogue actors to acquire bioweapons, that is very true. Now, this particular case could be anything. It could be a calculated leak, it could be speculative, it could be information warfare, or there could be some truth. The fact remains, Gaurav, that every big power uh, uh, undertakes different kind of gaming. They game different conflicts. Okay. Gaming is, a gaming is very much a part of uh, the conflict management. And different scenarios are gamed, including uh, uh, use of bioweapon uh, now, and pros and cons are evaluated. Uh, some games, th theories are gamed and abundant. Some could be taken further. The you know, but with the confidence or, that there would be no blowback, the fact, the yeah, fact I'm that... Coming, coming to that, coming to that, give me half a uh, set minute and I'll, I'll come to that. So, now, just in case, just in case, this was actually the, uh, what happened. Now, it is not that only one country can do that. There are other powers also which can do that. And the fact is that while chemical and biological warfare weapons and stockpiles have been destroyed, the samples have been kept. Yes. So there is going to be a huge blowback. Can you imagine half a million American lives lost and they will uh, they will turn the other cheek? It will not happen. Okay. So yes, uh, I, I think we should be very careful in uh, jumping to conclusions. It's a very difficult situation, but uh, we have to look at it very carefully. No, because, you know, as, as Professor Yan was saying that China has a lot of money, China has muscle power, and they've employed both in the past to ensure facts don't emerge. And General Gurmeet, uh, biological weapons have been talked about in warfare. Sir, do you, do you, you've seen the report. Can you correlate it with the situation on ground, sir? Gaurav, uh, I would go by what uh, Dr. Li Ming is saying. Uh, her perception that uh, it has leaked from the military labs and uh, it could have been accidental relief. Uh, see, one thing is very clear that uh, if you go into deep study on China and if you've been China observer, you will find that they've always gone for indirect approach. They've gone in for a unrestricted warfare technique and uh, uh, they have talked about the three warfare where psychology, media, and legal war have been. And they are aware that PLA and the Chinese army have got no combat experience. They got a very low soldierly competency and skill 
Okay. So therefore, they had to get into this bio weapon, bio terrorism aspect of it. If you start analyzing from 1999 when they started this bio warfare uh, researches from the British point of view, then 2002, 2003, as you said, and 2015, they were trying to probe weaponizing the uh, virus as such. In fact, I would go by this what Dr. Uh, Li Meng is saying that it is definitely has followed the route of the PLA, their scientists and the and those experts okay. on the bio warfare attempting to do something of that nature. Dr. Otherwise, Mahajan, uh, as somebody, uh, Dr. Mahajan, you know, fact remains, China has been very cagey about sharing information on ground. You are dealing with COVID cases every day. China's lack of transparency, does that look suspicious? And in your appreciation, um, is it too soon to say whether this is man-made, uh, came from bats, accidentally received, uh, released, or intentionally? Uh, Gaurav, it's very difficult for me to speculate on that. Uh, many experts have uh, talked about it, and uh, uh, it, it works both ways. Some feel it was synthetically produced, and we know that the capability, as one of the panelists said, exists. In not only in China, but in many countries of the world, that you can actually modify a virus, make it more lethal, make it, uh, uh, you know, more virulent, make it more infectious. All of this can be done in the lab. Whether it actually happened or not, uh, one can only speculate. But one thing one does know is that the WHO has been rather lenient yes. in its approach to China, whether it was in the beginning of the pandemic, in the delay in defining it as a pandemic and then also when the team that went uh, to china from the who side they were not given access to anything it was as if uh, as has been said also as if the culprit is actually writing uh, the case report oh absolutely and so from that point of view it could be the muscle power of china uh, it could be the fear that they have and the fact that it's an economic superpower now which is uh, stimming the uh, uh, you know whole process. But if you ask me, yes, it is possible to create such a bioweapon. It is being done, okay. whether it happened accidentally or intentionally. The fact of the Dr. matter Yang. is that the world, the world is on its knees and, and China is actually open and free. And perhaps, you know, this, this, is, this is what that report talks about. But Dr. Yan, what yeah. is the evidence that this was created in a Chinese military lab and that it was released intentionally, ma'am? Okay, I have presented the scientific and also some intelligent evidence in the published three yen report, which you can find the link from my Twitter at in a pink tweet. And among these reports, I listed saw uh, hundreds of the evidence that, I mean, references with evidence that who are going to do this in the past, who gave money to encourage people to do these things, and who have done such things and also publish it and then leave the same evidence in the SARS-CoV-2 genome, and uh, who are organizing the cover-up and also spreading this information to mislead the whole world after this. All these things people can verify there. And also, like this book I have mentioned in the third report, I'm going to write the next report based on the evidence in this book and explain how to realize the things, how to understand this footage using okay. CCP okay. thinking. And Dr. Yan, again, in your appreciation, what was China's motive? Why would China, uh, uh, you know, you say intentionally release a bioweapon why have they done that? So what I can tell you is, I always tell people that the motive you have to ask the Chinese Communist Party itself is like when you say the terror kills some people, you can only presume the uh, motive is what, but the real motive only you can ask the terror. But what I can tell you is, like they described in the textbook, is they know this is a good bioweapon which is invisible and which is powerful and it's difficult to be realized 
and also they can use this one to achieve their okay. idea that China always want to conquer the world and human is nothing for them. Jaydev Ranade, if China had nothing to hide, why would Beijing be so cagey about facts emerging in public domain? And in this, this does require closer scrutiny. You heard Dr. Mahajan say that even when, when the WHO team went, the kind of restrictions that were put on the WHO team, and it was almost as if the accused was writing the report exonerating himself. In fact, um, I think uh, Dr. Mahajan was being very diplomatic or polite. The fact is that the Chinese have been manipulating the WHO for quite a while, ever since the outbreak. Firstly, they uh, did not inform the WHO of the exact nature of the virus and how it's, it is spreading through human-to-human -human contact. It was the Taiwanese who went ahead and uh, disclosed it to the WHO, which did not act on it. The Chinese came out much later. Secondly, the um, uh, Chinese did not ban flights in and out of Wuhan, yes. which incidentally is the most highly connected city in China with uh, the world outside as well as within China. Third, the person who led the WHO team, the Dashik, is the same individual who was working in the Wuhan lab for many years and he knew everyone there. So obviously he had a stake in seeing to it that nothing um, uh, negative was found. So there was all this area. And then, the, to top it all, the team was allowed, WHO team was allowed 18 months after the event. And yes. uh, everything had been cleaned up, the uh, research uh, areas, the labs, everything. So I think, um, while I would not go as far as to say that this virus was deliberately leaked, uh, but I would not hesitate to say that it escaped from uh, a lab where it was under development. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, Dr. Lee has, uh, Dr. Yan has argued that China is using its money power and muscle power to ensure facts don't emerge. Is it too far-fetched then to join the dots from the assessment of the situation on ground, the report and her assessment, sir? Uh, Gaurav, I have a very simple question. Why would the U.S. and the Western powers cover it up? Very simple. I mean, if the virus had only attacked developing countries and it had not affected the first world, uh, you know, people would have kept quiet. I, I'm just saying theoretically. Yes. But here it has affected the economy, the well-being, the health, the families of a 3.3 million people, more than half of which are the Western world. Why will, can America be bright? I, I hold no brief for China. I would love to have it hauled over the coals. But let us uh, also understand the nature of the uh, issue involved. Now, as far as China is concerned, it is non-transparent period. Everything is secret. And that is their character. That the Wuhan lab was not uh, having following best practices is very well known. There have been leaks. So, uh, Anything is possible when China is concerned, but I think it is uh, if there had been a smoking gun or even some indication of uh, some wrongdoing, okay. by now the Western countries would have been knocking at Chinese doors, not politely to shake hands, but uh, with, with a very strong message. I'm putting it politely. General Gurmeet Singh, the report talks about how to unleash the weapon. The timing, the weather, the climate conditions for maximum impact. Now, once again, this report of 2015, accessed in 2020, uh, compare it to situation on ground. Do two and two make four here? Or are we trying to join the dots? Or as the Chinese say, it's too far-fetched. It's just a smear campaign. Bio warfare is at its as good as any other warfare. I would say, look, the truth can never be kept under the carpet. And it, the truth will definitely tumble out. And it is tumbling out at the moment. I would say that uh, the, the complexity of WHO and uh, CCP or the China search and PLA trying to have bioweapon capability, the truth will also come out of it. Okay. In fact, I would say that uh, usually uh, 
the world has been keeping itself away from nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. But uh, unfortunately, if a nation has got an ill intention and it is in hurry to dominate the world to unethicality, and when its principles are unrestricted, when it is itself up, follows the indirect approach of warfare, and when it is entangled itself in lies, okay. blockages, non-transparency, this is quite possible. Dr. Mahajan, there are some who argue, why is this impacting India more than the neighborhood, our immediate neighborhood? Uh, you know, some argue Nepal or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or even Pakistan not as badly Im impacted as India. Uh, is that curious, sir? I don't really think so, uh, uh, Gaurav. I think probably uh, India has done 2 million uh, tests a day which uh, even if we were to compensate for the population of our neighbors, the percentage-wise testing would be much, much lesser. If you don't test, you don't pick up uh, the abnormality and the uh, uh, diagnosis. Second, again, India is accused of uh, under-reporting deaths, but I think our neighbors are equally in the same uh, boat, if not worse off. Uh, and if you see now in the second wave, uh, you know, unfortunately, Nepal, even Bangladesh, uh, the numbers appear to be coming up. So, I, personally, if you ask me, I don't think there would be a material difference. We are basically the same ethnicity. Our uh, living conditions are similar. Uh, in, if anything, healthcare system in India is better able to cope with the challenges uh, and, and so the numbers, I don't think, would be much different. You know, but no. the kind of health emergency that we saw in our country or that, uh, you know, that desperation for oxygen, uh, looking for remdesivir, looking for medicines, the clamor, people dying on doorsteps of hospitals, those kind of reports, Jaydev Ranade, we don't see in the neighborhood. Is that curious or is the impact more here? Because Indians haven't followed the kind of COVID-appropriate behavior that we should have. I mean, be it uh, be it religion, be it politics, be it whatever reason. Well, to some extent, I think um, uh, Dr. Mahajan would be better placed to answer that. But let me just say that uh, there are two factors here that are at play. One, that our population is much larger and uh, we have been hit very badly, but we are not the only ones gasping for oxygen. I think I've been reading reports that uh, this has started to happen in Bangladesh and Nepal also. Secondly, I would say that our media has been very active. They have been highlighting all these cases, which in a sense is good, because then the relief supplies can be directed towards that place. But that has also ensured that there is much more coverage for this. But more than that, I am not able to say. But I'd like to add two quick points, Gaurav, before we move on. Uh, firstly, this document that has come out is a state is has been uh, got out of the State Department. Yes. the U.S. State Department. So the Americans are very much aware of what's going on. Let's not forget, they also funded some of these labs. Yes. Second, the uh, Chinese leadership, the communist Chinese leadership, has never been concerned about the loss of human life, their own or others. I think we need to keep that in the back of our mind. Dr. Yan, do you have a take on, um, you know, if this is a biological weapon, if this is a weapon that's intended to bring the enemy country's health system uh, to collapse or down on its knees? It's happening in India. It doesn't seem to be happening in India's neighborhood. So, uh, first, I can't uh, comment a specific situation happened in countries like India or your neighborhood because... As the doctors also mentioned that we are still lack of some data, but I won't tell it from the other side, that is China plan to use this unrestricted bioweapon to attack their enemies. And you can think about when they celebrate the anti-COVID trophy this year, when the other countries are suffering from that, when they start to laugh at other countries if they don't listen to Chinese Communist Party and they have to suffer the damage, when they try to laugh at India's laws as, okay, we send the people to the uh, space and you also did the same. I think you know which I quote, which is very humanity. 
So I think you, uh, Indian government and also other governments should really focus on uh, the intelligence things to say what really happened to lead this pandemic or outbreak. At least uh, you should examine the evidence, collect okay. the evidence, and know what happened. Okay. Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, uh, you know, as, as the world looks at these documents, uh, the kind of pressure the world that should be mounted on China, it's not happening. Now, is this the Chinese muscle power, money power, uh, or is it, as uh, Jaydev Ranade also argues, that America funded some of these labs, they may have some skeletons to hide, or, or will you see perhaps some action take place in the months ahead? It has been uh, almost 12 and 5, 17, 18 months. Yes. President Trump uh, called it a Wuhan virus. Uh, I don't think there is any love loss between the US and, and China. That the Americans had funded the Wuhan labs, what, it was already reported. Yes. And uh, so there, it was not hidden. Now, again, I'm coming to that. Already before that, the World Health Organization has certainly not covered itself in glory. It, there is no doubt about it. But the intelligence capabilities, uh, the scientific capabilities of uh, the US and Western world is no less. My simple point is that in case there was any pointers, there has been a lot of speculation. But if there was a smoking gun, what would have stopped the White House from going public? Yes. By now, I think that an international force would have gathered to retaliate very strongly. You know, the entire edifice of, uh, of balance was maintained between the Soviet Union and USA on the theory of MAD, mutually assured destruction. Yes. Now, the US is more than capable of uh, causing havoc, havoc in China if such a thing would have happened. So I think that, uh, you know, the, uh, there is, there could be a lot of cases, there could be uh, accident, there could be various scenarios, but we should not make haste. We should see how it is, it evolves. Okay. And if China is culpable, I don't think that it will go scot-free. And Jal Gurmeet Singh, so it's extremely essential uh, that there needs to be closer scrutiny and more transparency as the world needs to get to get to the truth. That unfortunately doesn't appear to be happening even now. Absolutely, Gaurav. I think the biggest problem at the moment is not much is known about the virus and about the origin and those people who have perpetrated this challenge to the entire humanity. I would say that uh, truthful investigation is a must, not only from the health point of view, but from the humanity and the global point of view. I think and that Dr. is Mahajan, important. If I may, last 30 seconds that I have on this part of the debate uh, is as an investigation hopefully is carried out, preparing for the next round. I mean, oh, most doctors say there will be a third wave and God forbid the third wave, one, it's being argued could be deadlier, could be engineered as some argue to be more virulent and impact children more as some doctors fear. That's right, Gaurav, but uh, I don't think you need to artificially engineer in anything because the virus is mutating all the time. You've seen so many new mutants, and we are seeing even in the second wave that this is unlike the first wave, the virus has mutated its shape, its infectivity, probably even its virulence is different. So it keeps changing. It's very clever. It will always stay, try to stay ahead of you. And hence I say, the only escape for us apart from following COVID appropriate behavior and masking, most importantly, is to get vaccinated as quickly as possible, as many of us as possible, so that there is no uh, you know, vaccine escape in okay. the days and uh, weeks to come, and uh, that we are able to have as much of our population immune from this. I will let uh, that be the possible. last word on this part of the show. And Dr. Li Meng Yan, Joining us from New York, many thanks. Ambassador Vishnu Prakash, Jaydev Ranade, Dr. Harsh Mahajan, Angel Gurmeet Singh. Always, always so enlightening to hear from you and learn from you. Thank you very much.
A quick break at this stage. Now, when